Do you feel stuck in life? Do you feel like your wheels are spinning and no matter what you do, you can't seem quite seem to get out of the chaos of modern life and the, the river of demands and expectations and constantly ever shifting social mores that constantly keep you distracted from doing what in the Western esoteric tradition we call your true will. We come into this world naked and afraid with no instruction manual, or maybe we do have an instruction manual and we just don't quite know how to find it yet. But one way or another, we go out into the world and we go from the care of our parents or guardians into school and then from school out into uh, higher education for some of us and work for others uh, on into one way or another the adult working world where we're suddenly expected to pick a role to suddenly decide who we are almost arbitrarily by the time we're full-grown adults most of us are completely confused and lost let's let's call it what it is a lot of us are completely confused and lost out in the world trying to understand what exactly we are supposed to make of this chaotic thing that we're all in. So, you know, you're born, you grow up, you go to school and immediately things start getting layered on. Maybe religious indoctrination happens as well, political indoctrination. Uh, and that can be very extreme depending on where you grow up in the world, but it's the blanket case everywhere. No matter who you are, you're going to be indoctrinated with something as you grow up because the adults are going to decide that that's what worked best for them. And so that'll work best for you. Um, but that's not always the case. Then, of course, at school, our teachers put a whole other set of social expectations on us. If we go on to college and things like that, then we get even more indoctrinated something that becomes more and more clearer with every day. And then of course, in the working world, once we get out into the working world, whether that's sooner or later, we will immediately be cut down to size and forced to be a round peg or rather forced to be a square peg in a round hole. So is it any wonder that by the time we're full grown adults ourselves, we're just little more than bundles of neuroses, confusion and just lots of conflicting ideas about things, conflicting instructions, and just a kind of general anxiety about and possibly depression about everything. Is it really any wonder um, that when we had our heads filled with all this bizarre ideology and bizarre code that then when we confront the real world and it doesn't really work that way, that we become frustrated, depressed, anxious, stressed, etc. And then of course, Society is quite happy to sell us ready packaged answers. So you have all the world religions, you have the psychiatrist couch, you have pop psychology, you have TV. All of these things will give you a tailor made answer for what, how you can fix your problems or what the meaning of life is. If you go to the Christians, they'll tell you the meaning of life is to serve Christ and your fellow man. If you go to the Buddhists, they'll tell you the meaning of life is that it's simply emptiness and impermanent um, and so on and so forth, you know. Um, with the Western magical tradition, it's a little bit different. We have a different view of things. Um, the way that we see it is everyone has a different meaning for their life. There's a different meaning of life for everyone. And in addition to that, the way that we see things is it can be hard for people to get to that meaning of life rather than giving them a dogma or an ideology. Instead, we simply give people tools to discover that for themselves. The way that we see things in the Western esoteric tradition, and this is a little bit different from the Eastern traditions, although they, they match up at the high levels, but it's a little bit different. Um, the way that we see things is that every person on this planet has a blueprint for the person that they're supposed to become or that they're it's they have the potential to become and that it's their work as an individual to discover that blueprint and then use it to build their life to build the temple of their life if you will um the thing is um, that's easier said than done but for us this question of you know finding yourself um if you want to use more common language for it, this question of finding yourself, um, 
It's not quite so simple as a pep talk that doesn't quite cut it. And so I'm very sympathetic to the fact and this culture is already going in that direction because Western culture goes in the direction of Western esotericism, um, which prototypes and is research and development for the future of culture. So the way that we see it in the Western esoteric tradition is that finding the meaning of your life, which is different for everyone, is a subtractive process not an additive process. It's a process of getting underneath all those layers of social conditioning and stories that other people have put on you in order to get down to the real core, like the biological core of what truly is going to make you happy in life, right? And very thankfully, we live in a society where this is increasingly possible. All right, guys and gals, what are we actually doing here? Forget all of the trappings of magic and the occult and the, the symbols and the secret societies and even all the, you know, the specific yoga poses and all of that. Just forget it. Just forget it for a second. There's one question which nobody ever seems to ask, which is why? Why? Why are we interested in this stuff? And what's the point? And how is this better from, I don't know, just simply getting a therapist or something like that? Look at it like this. Imagine that you're born with a pair of glasses and the glasses are perfectly clear, perfectly polished, 2020 vision. But as time goes on, as you go through school and life, they start to get kind of uh, dirty and they get corroded and, and covered over with debris to the point that you can't even see anymore. Um, this is This generally tends to be the situation we find ourselves in. So the question of seeing clearly or returning to our true original nature is not a question of adding. It's not a question of buying new glasses. It's just a question of cleaning, gla cleaning the glasses that we already have so that we can see clearly again. This is a very, very basic metaphor for meditation, but it's also a very, very accurate and true one that actually quite clearly encapsulates what the process is. So I'm not here to suggest that you believe anything. I really don't care, honestly, or you adopt an ideology or anything like that. It's better not to. The only reason that I'm here is to basically give people tools to return to being who they are. Because the thing that really stresses people out is when they get off the path in life. And the thing that makes everything kind of fall apart and feel like life is against you is when you're off the path of what you specifically are supposed to be doing in your life, which is different from everyone else. It's different for each person. And isn't this true if you think back on your life, the times when you've been in the flow of what you know you're actually supposed to be doing, well, that's when things start to work as if by magic, when the synchronicities really start flowing. So when you really take that call to adventure, that call to the, the journey of exploring yourself, of going inward and then manifesting the core of yourself outward into the world, another way of saying magic, another way of saying meditation and magic, the inward journey to discover the true core of yourself and then the outward manifestation of that inner truth for the benefit of all of us, whether that's through art or a business or a new philosophy or books or whatever it happens to be, or simply just raising a family, being a good member of society. So there's two major crisis points in life that I've observed with lots and lots and lots of my students um, and that I've also gone through myself. Two crises of adult life that can really wobble us, can really set us uh, in a direction away from our true will. I call these two the crisis of becoming and the crisis of being. All right, so what do I mean by that? The crisis of becoming is that period in your life when you enter the adult world. Now, for some of us, that's early, maybe just out of high school or even not finishing high school. For other of us, um, that may be after college or even higher education, but one way or another, when you go out into the working world, it is a real adjustment, isn't it? I mean, a lot of your ideas about how life is or how it should be or what your role in it is going to be or should be just get shattered. And you suddenly go from feeling like you're the main character in the movie, like you're the hero, right? And you're going to be the 
the, the prince who draws the sword from the stone, who conquers, uh, becomes the king, gets the princess, all this stuff. And then you get out into the world and it's like, all right, buddy, take a number, get in the back of the line, right? Like uh, time to go look for a job. And that's a really tough moment because that's a moment where it's really easy to give up on your dreams. Um, that's a moment where it's really easy to feel stuck as if maybe um, whatever your dreams were were not strong enough or you weren't good enough. Um, and the reality is that the world makes many, many demands on us. And of course, juggling what we're really supposed to do with the demands that are put on us, that's just a juggling act that we all have to do. And that's part of it. But this is a really tough period for people because it's kind of like, you know, when I think back to this period of my life, it just feels like a flower slowly wilting. You know what I mean? It, like uh, just the, as the reality of like, for me, just kind of endless uh, office jobs started to sit in, set in after the fun of college. And it just felt like kind of like my dream slowly wilting and dying and just thinking I'm going to be stuck in this cubicle forever. And uh, the, the faster I give up on my dreams, the better, because then it won't hurt anymore. OK, this is a really, really, really easy place to find yourself in, particularly because as I remember from many, many years when you're out in the working world, often it's so exhausting just to go to work and then travel, you know, commute to and from work and then cook and try and keep the house clean. You, you don't have energy to do anything else except for work and basic survival functions. So it's very easy to feel stuck in that place. So that's a critical moment. That's a moment where we all need a little bit of magic. That's a moment where maybe we realize we need some stronger, we need some stronger techniques to get down further to our core to get more clear about who we are and not just get clear about who we are, but get the strength and the power to manifest who we are. These are the early challenges, the early battles that, uh, you know, a young magician, for lack of putting it uh, any other way, must fight. And that is asserting themselves in the face of, frankly, the world's withering, complete lack of any interest whatsoever. Um, the world doesn't care. Not on that level, individuals care and people in your life care. But the reality that people face as they go out into the world is they're insignificant. And so the quest to become significant, the quest to become somebody is a true magical quest. The other crisis is the crisis of being. And that's the crisis that people can face once they've become, they've achieved, once they've got what they wanted, what they set out to get. Or maybe they didn't get what they set out to get, but they took the job, they took the the second best, they took the, you know, the, just the thing that they needed just to get by. And now they're very successful in it. And they're 42, 45 years old, and they're the head of, you know, vice president of marketing at some company, but they feel hollow. They don't have any time for themselves left. They feel like um, the person that they was, the person, you know, that younger self who wanted to be free and and adventurous and, and um, who wanted to change the world is just kind of slowly fading into the distance, is slowly dying within them. And, and they tell themselves, this is reality, this is adult life, this is, what, this is what growing up is all about. And there is some truth to that. But there's also truth to the fact that we are put here to follow our calling. That's what we're here for, in my opinion, in my way of thinking. In my way of thinking, it's like in between free will and destiny is the hermetic idea of the true will. You know, the idea of destiny is that we're born, you know, no matter what we do, it's predestined. We're, we're going to be great or we're going to not be great. And it's already written in the stars, no matter what we do. And the idea of free will is the opposite. No, we don't have a destiny. We have free will, so we better make good decisions, which is generally how people see things in the modern world. The idea of true will synthesizes those in like a Hegelian dialectic. And it's as follows. Yes, we have free will, of course, but we are born with a blueprint, a true will, a blueprint for who we can become if we choose to. And so our work as human beings consists of accepting the call to adventure, living up to that, saying, yes, I will become that person that the universe has, has called me to become. And how do we find that? You know, it's like, it's in there. We call it the voice of the silence in the magical tradition, but it can be a burning, 
need to express something, a burning need to become somebody. And, and that might have been buried your entire life for 30, 40, 50 years, 70, 70 years. There may be aspects of yourself that you simply buried um, and that are still in there trying to get out. And that's because we're born with the blueprint of who we can become, of who we can express. And a successful life, in my way of thinking, is one that expresses its blueprint, um, assuming that it's not malevolent, of course. Um, and a failed life is one that does not express that blueprint, that um, stays small, stays afraid, stays scared. And this is a process of unfolding that goes on over one's entire adult life. Think of a seed. A seed has the genetic code in it to grow a tree. Not every seed becomes a tree though. However, every tree that exists started out as a seed and every seed that exists has the potential to grow into a tree. I think it's similar with human beings. You're born with the code of who you can become, but you have to make sure that you're planted correctly, that you're nurtured, that you have everything you need, that you um, become who you are. And the way to become who you are is not just sitting on the meditation bench. It's manifesting your will. It's doing projects. It's going out into the world, into the working world, adventuring, going to other countries, doing things to mix up how you normally think about things, embracing life full on, you know, manifesting different lives for yourself to see what works. This is magic. I mean, magic is essentially expressing and creating in the world. If you think of meditation as going inward into absorption to observe the innermost core of yourself, and then magic is the act of coming from that place to create externally, to manifest into the world. And when you manifest into the world from your true self, rather than the mask, and we're all called to put on masks in life, and some of them get nailed on, um, when we express from our true core, without the mask and not from the mask, it's scary. It is scary, but it's fulfilling and it's rewarding and no risk, no reward. It is risky. Expressing who you really are is risky, but when you do it, it makes other people a little bit braver. It gives people a little bit more of, a little bit more permission to do it themselves. And that's the world that we're trying to build here. We're not, the Western magical tradition is not trying to build a world in which everyone is in the Western magical tradition. That sounds awful, frankly, because then we have to deal with everyone. We don't want to do that. The Western magical tradition is not trying to create a dogma, ideology, or religion for the world to follow, to control people. We don't want to control people. We could care less. What we're trying to do is give people the tools to become leaders themselves. What we're trying to do is give people the tools to discover the meaning for the, of life for themselves to become unstuck themselves. You already have greatness within you. You already have genius within you. Just like everyone else in the world, it's just covered over with all of this stuff, some more than others. And so we in the magical tradition are simply kind of in the business of giving people shovels. Um, that isn't a Twin Peaks reference, by the way, but I suppose it could be. Dig yourself out of the shit, $29.99. So that's the name of the game. If you feel like your car's gotten stuck in the mud, it's because this is standard in the society. The reason is we're not given tools in order to like, you know, we're told to find ourselves to figure it all out, but we're not given tools to do that, which is really, really, really frustrating and really, really, really frustrated me, which is why I went and found the tools, which are a little bit hard to find, but which I'm making available. It's the Western magical tradition works really, really well for people who grow up in Western cultures rather than trying to adopt, I don't know, trying to act like you're meditating, you're a meditating Buddhist on a hill or something like that. The Western tradition works really, really well for people in first world developed countries. So that's the answer to why. The why is you're already wonderful. You're incredible. You are exactly what the world needs. You at your best, at your highest. The why is we just need to uncover or like clear away the stuff that's keeping you from doing that. And that tends to be done very well through things like meditation. These aren't the only tools, by the way, but they're the tools that I teach that I'm good at teaching. For instance, meditation, which goes down past all the mental chatter, all the, you know, all that 
garbage that's running around in your mind from, you know, from your phone and the culture and songs and stuff caught in your head and all of that to get down to the deep levels of your mind, to get down to the deeper, deeper, deeper layers of yourself. Magic is an inward journey. It's an inward adventure. Actually, I take that back. Um, the goal of... Okay, look, I was lying. I'm sorry. I'm really, I'm trying really hard to market this and make it sound good, you know, but look, I can't do this anymore. I can't. I've been lying to everyone for 25 years um, and I can't live with myself anymore. I, I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious, actually. I can't do this. I stay awake at night and um, I'm just going to tell you, okay, the point of the Western magical tradition, it's true, it's true goal. I can't believe that I've been misleading people for so long is to serve my dog Charlie. <laughs>